we are all used to what we call in a certain way linear thinking cause and effect all the data we look at attrition has happened what are the causes linear calm so on and so forth today we are at the time where if you looked at that linearity that worked for you in the past would you improve composition by 10% and would it result in a 10% increase in employee satisfaction or a 10% increase in employee retention the answer is probably no for example a lot of us have been focusing on employee wellness over the number of years but covid brought that to a head and today the challenge is that when you're looking at the gen z when you're looking at people who are at a age when they're not thinking wellness how do you make them think about it Ladies and gentlemen with a huge round of applause please join me in welcoming Mr Anupam Arun country head and senior SVP Sivent to deliver the keynote address on events movements significant swing in HR functions ladies and gentlemen i give you Mr Anupam Arun good morning ladies and gentlemen and thank you Sapphire Connect for giving me this honor and opportunity and while i say good morning it's actually pretty much midnight in my time zones for the kind of geographies i manage so if i fumble in my thoughts just blame it on lack of sleep all right um when we look at the topic we were discussing overarchingly about the extraordinary times and the extraordinary measures i would respectfully disagree and like to rephrase it i would rephrase it as we are in an era full of once in a lifetime crises a mouthful let me repeat i think we are in an era full of once in a lifetime crises now not only that but all these crises happened together and impacted each industry each company and probably every individual across the globe now remember prior to this era we were already in what was called the vuca world right we were saying it's volatile it's uncertain complex and ambiguous and today i feel that it has metamorphosed into what i would call as the new world order of bani now environment is brittle people are anxious and the challenges we face are non linear and even incomprehensible let us talk about how this is bringing a quantum shift in hr and all our lives so on the surface things appear to be perfect the challenge is that the systems though they appear perfect are fragile and could collapse at any moment in such a situation data is our best friend and even every data centric decision needs to have a plan b let's take an example and i'm going to quote a few examples from my role as you heard being a de facto head of hr and country head at seven for the last 3 out of 5 years so i've had a fair ringside view to challenges that some of you probably handle as hr professionals so post covid employee retention looked great people were worried about job security and it was like a dream time for hr folks right no no attrition not too much pressure no comp conversations and suddenly we all experienced what we call the bottled up attrition now that period of time you realize the brutalness and you know we go have to go back to our decision making process to the data that we look at to the plan b at c when we focused on pivoting to retention through what we call culture and growth we decisively refrained from participating in the war for talent longer term impact we got 25% headcount growth attrition in single digits and a improved esat score so second one i want to talk about after brittle is anxious you know as we know information is the new oil everybody wants more of it but it can lead to what we call sla stimuli led anxiety now it is easy to get overwhelmed in today's times with a bunch of information you heard about how that is going to become worse in my opinion with generative ai you know a simple question is that typical example of that person asking for a coffee and getting a whole host of options in a certain way that additional information is going to lead to the challenge 
And the answer that we have to think of is, how do we have the empathy to make sure that we are communicating proactively? You know, and in that example, one of the biggest things that caused anxiety was the return to office phenomena. Every employee was worried, every employee was unsure. There was so much of information, especially on the University of WhatsApps about what companies are gonna do, what's happening globally, what's happening in different locations. Every employee was concerned about it. At Seven, for example, we ensured that every communication on any timeline, any change in circumstances what was done at least six months in advance. It's very easy when you sit in C-suite, when you sit in the boardroom, when you sit as HR to make decisions, to be very prescriptive. But can you put yourself in the shoes of those people whose lives have been disrupted, who have lost loved ones, whose views on what life means for get employment has changed forever? And if you can, six months is nothing. So it allowed people to come back to offices at Cvent in four different phases. As a result, we had 95% of our people come back over the last six months. So moving on, Let's see. Yep. Now we are all used to what we call, in a certain way, linear thinking, cause and effect. All the data we look at, attrition has happened. What are the causes? Linear, calm, so on and so forth. Today we are at the time where, if you looked at that linearity that worked for you in the past. Would you improve composition by 10% and would it result in a 10% increase in employee satisfaction or a 10% increase in employee retention? The answer is probably no. The focus has to be on a lot of the, fa lot of the factors that are at play in a non-linear fashion. For example, a lot of us have been focusing on employee wellness over the number of years, but COVID brought that to a head. And today the challenge is that when you're looking at the Gen Z, when you're looking at people who are at an age where they're not thinking wellness, how do you make them think about it? Do you continue to do programs which gives them benefits which nobody utilizes? In our situation, we ensured that all those benefits come to the employees during their work hours. If you're doing a meditation session, it is an office. If you're doing a wellness, it is an office. If it is a dietitian course, it is an office. You change the menu in your own cafeteria because a lot of people eat there. So it's a lot about making sure that you try anything and everything under the sun because there is no one cause and effect that is gonna work. And lastly, it is interesting because some of the challenges we face are just incomprehensible. And I feel it's a time, whether you are an HR professional, a CEO, or a, or a business leader, or even a political leader, these are the times where it's okay to say, I don't know. It's okay, ladies and gentlemen, because you may be wrong, and even that is fine. From my personal experience, there is no problem in being wrong. What is not okay is not to act in the fear of being wrong. And that is one of our biggest challenges, I feel, in corporate India. Lack of action, lack of timely initiatives, lack of proactiveness because there's a fear that guess what if it is wrong. So moving on from this, when I talk about my own experience personally and the convergence of VUCA and Bani, everything happened to me because I'm not a certified HR professional. I got thrown into HR for three to four years along with my responsibility. The most relevant question that kept biting at me during this period of time was, how do we understand our people better? Because it's so complex. It's so complex to think about your own situation, which is so fast, so agile. How do we as HR understand what our people want? And the answer in one line, if I was to put it, is you all wear the HR hat, and that is great. How about stepping into the business shoes? Because guess what? When you heard the comment about HR being number eight on that list, there is a reason academic or puritan thought process will not cut ice in an environment where the business is getting disrupted every few months. So if you are not wearing the business shoes, you're not going to go far. So will it work? Now you may ask this, this whole approach of business. So when I look at my five years at Cvent, uh, you know, we've been a great place to work. We have managed to reduce attrition to single digits while doubling our headcount to almost two and a half thousand people. So, looks like it works. Now, we can get overwhelmed, as we said, with all the challenges that are being thrown, us, thrown at us as corporate professionals. We can call it VUCA, BANI, whatever the fancy acronym might be. But the essence to me, ladies and gentlemen, is that the human spirit always triumphs. And at H as HR, 
I believe we are the torch bearers of that spirit. Because to me, the quantum shift that we are looking at is that from looking at human resources, it's going to be a lot about human relations. Now, I know there's a lot of discussion on technology. We are a SaaS company. We are on the cutting edge of it. But I want to give you a very, very important experience that we went through as an organization. When COVID hit, we were one of the most affected industries because there were no live events. We are an event technology company, right? And we thought, like travel, like airlines, like hospitality, this is the end of the road. And everybody pivoted to virtual. We all remember the number of Zoom sessions, multiple events that we are logging into, and the whole industry was disrupted. But remember, we are humans. For many years, whether it's automation, whether it is internet, like we said, AI has been around for a number of years, the spirit that we all survive by is the spirit of human interaction. Guess what, today, a lot of those companies don't exist that had bet on that everything was going to become virtual. We are seeing live events like this back to 90% to the pre-COVID levels. So I strongly believe in the spirit of that human resilience. And talking of those relations, I think it can be served in one word. If you want to take away one word in my recommendation for the future, it is this. We use it in, at CVN quite a lot, something that I, I feel very passionately about. The key word here is not care. The key word here is personally. In my three decades of experience in the corporate world, it is rare to find people who take it personally. In my 30 years, it is very important to feel personally about things you are passionate about in your organization, whatever that might be. And thinking of that, uh, you know, there's an interesting uh, video that um, I'm sure you, some of you might have seen. I apologize if you are. Let's see if I can bring it up. Uh, our dear Simon Sinek. Uh, let's see. When we are willing to put ourselves at risk to be there for someone, right? Don't worry, if this goes south, I will be there for you. Um, which m may mean working late, it may mean working extra hours, it may mean putting our reputations on the line. I mean, there's a lot of things that that takes. Um, uh, but when we genuinely promise to be there for someone, um, um, uh, and, and it, it has to be genuine, uh, because if it gets tested, it's, it's very easy to find out if it was genuine or not. Um, but if it's genuine, then, then it's repaid remarkably. Let, let me give you a silly example. Um, let's say that, um, so I talk about this um, sometimes, which is the giving of time and energy is more powerful than the giving of money. You can't build trust with money. So paying somebody bonuses and giving somebody a big salary, though feels nice, is not earning or building any trust whatsoever. You cannot pay for trust. Um, and here's the example. Um, let's say you're moving house. Um, and one of your friends says, you know what? I want to help you. We've been friends for years. Um, I'm going to pay for the moving van. Here's $5,000 and the moving van. Let me know how it goes. Have a great move. That's really generous, right? Another friend says, you know what? I want to help you move. And they come over the week before and they're sitting in your house packing boxes. They're s s sweat dripping down their brow. They're there with you all day. They're there to help load the truck. They're there to help unload the truck. They're, they're there um, uh, to unwrap everything. Right? They paid zero money. They gave you time and energy, which are non-redeemable commodities. Money, we make money, we spend money, we make money back. It's a redeemable commodity. Time and energy are non-redeemable commodities. And so when someone gives us something that they cannot get back, it has a much more powerful effect on how we feel. So now both those people call you another time and say, I need your help. Which one are you more apt to help? The one who gave you money or the one who gave you time and energy? So. And Ashutosh, I did see this on LinkedIn, so thank you for that. But um, as Simon says, it's not about, like I said, the linear factors, compensation, benefits. It's about the time and effort. Because eventually, it's about care in that human relations aspect of human resources in the times that we live in. So while there's a lot of emphasis on knowledge, a lot of information available, probably best ever that the mankind has ever had, I'll leave you with this one line, which is one of my favorite lines. No one cares how much you know till they know how much you care. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for the attention.